Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager here at Accessibility, and I'm also a passionate disability rights advocate and attorney, focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we are joined by Susan Procroft of the Paralyzed Veterans of America. Welcome, Susan. Good to be with you, Josh. Well, Susan, all right, just to, just to start, let's, uh, let's dive in. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> um, briefly, I am a uh, native of Arlington, Virginia, grew up here in the Washington, D.C. area, and I live in Arlington with my husband and two cats um, for purposes of our conversation, I have a fairly long history in government relations, um, going back to my days after graduate school when I worked as a legislative assistant for the Virginia General Assembly for a member of the General Assembly from Arlington. Went from there to Capitol Hill, where I worked for several years for Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur of Toledo, Ohio, uh, in uh, as her a legislative assistant handling veterans issues, senior citizens issues, healthcare issues, et cetera. Went from her office to the American Society of Internal Medicine where I handled regulatory affairs for uh, primary care physicians uh, represented by that organization. And then since 1997, I have been in the advocacy program for Paralyzed Veterans of America. And so then tell us about that work that you've been doing. Okay, well, um, the work I have been doing for PVA over the years, um, I'll describe a little bit about our government relations program. We are sort of split into two parts. Our advocacy program, of which I am a part, deals with issues affecting PVA members as people with disabilities. And so that program over the years was in the, they, they were part of the fight to pass the ADA back in 1990. Um, we've worked on disability employment issues over the years, fair housing issues, voting access, <clears throat> air carrier access, the whole gamut. If it's an issue that affects people with disabilities and affects our members as people with disabilities, the advocacy program will follow that. Then we have what we call our legislation program. That is another team dealing with uh, VA issues, issues before the Department of Veterans Affairs, issues before the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and all things VA in that, uh, that circumstance. Um, some of the uh, things that I'm currently working on right now have to do with um, disability employment as it affects uh, veterans with disabilities in the broad workforce system. Also uh, working on some social security legislation, uh, trying to draw some attention to that. And, uh, and then uh, in addition to uh, the work that our advocacy team is doing in air carrier and uh, ADA enforcement, which we can get into a little bit on down in our conversation. Um, I, I think this is a perfect segue to that. So like with all of your advocacy work, and I know this is your day-to-day, -day, what you've been putting your time and energy into, but like what is what are some of the biggest bills and, and issues of 2022 that you'd want to share with, with our audience? Well, um, so like I said, um, I deal with Social Security, employment, fair housing access. So right now, my portfolio entails um, a lot of uh, liaison work with the Consortium for Constituents with Disabilities, CCD. And, uh, and some other allied organizations like the Strengthening Social Security Coalition. Um, we've been working on 
a bill called the Social Security 2100, a Sacred Trust Act. That is a fairly comprehensive bill to improve Social Security benefits across the board for retirees, people with disabilities, dependents and survivors, and also to shore up the system's finances. It uh, has over 200 co-sponsors in the, in the House, but for a variety of reasons has not gotten a markup in ways and means, let alone the floor of the House. So we are participating in a National Day of Action on August 15, which is the Social Security System's uh, anniversary. It'll be 87 years old on August 14. So on August 15, um, we and over 300 allied organizations are gonna be calling members of Congress, asking them, uh, A, to co-sponsor the bill if, it's, if they aren't already a co-sponsor, and if they are a co-sponsor, to ask them if they will vote for it, support that bill should it come to the House floor for a vote and to press the House leadership to bring it to the floor of the House for a vote. So that's kind of uppermost in my mind at the moment. Um, we're also following some emerging policy developments in the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, the, the, those committee Republicans recently issued a, a disability policy memo, which has some interesting um, features to it. it. It no specific legislative proposals, but it outlines a number of areas of interest that align with a good many interests of the disability community. So um, I'm planning to spend the quote unquote quiet time during August looking through that policy document and um, seeing where some of the issues they identify align with some of PVA's interests. And, and then of course, um, my dear colleague Lee Page is working strongly and forcefully on the Air Carrier Access Act amendments and trying to get a markup in Transportation and Infrastructure uh, Committee on that bill. They had hoped to get a markup um, this month, but for various reasons, it didn't happen. And so uh, we're we're beating members of Congress over the head during the August recess um, to- Work, work in your magic. <laughs> so we hope. But um, he's also been heavily involved in regulatory communications with the Department of Transportation on the air carrier issues, as well as Amtrak and, uh, and related transportation issues. And when it comes to the PVA, um, Paralyzed Veterans of America, I, I feel like I would love the audience to know more, like, what does that mean? So are you, do you guys serve just veterans that were, you know, in service and became paralyzed or uh, veterans that later on became paralyzed? Interestingly enough, um, PVA is almost unique among veteran service organizations in that we represent veterans with disabilities that are both service connected and uh, non-service connected. So disabilities acquired in both military service or outside military service. We've had some, uh, and that's sort of where our disability advocacy uh, drives from because even though veterans with non-service connected disabilities um, have access to the VA healthcare system. That came about thanks in large part to PVA's advocacy back in the 1990s. Uh, we got them connected up to the VA healthcare system, but veterans with catastrophic disabilities acquired outside military service are really no different than other people with disabilities. If they're not working, they rely on social security disability insurance. If they're low income, they may even be on SSI, um, you know, and they have to use the civilian uh, voc rehab system and workforce system if they want to get back in the workforce. Um, so uh, we represent veterans in both worlds. And uh, 
we're we're kind of proud of that because it has helped to inform our um, legislative and disability advocacy over the years. And now, so if someone wanted to learn more about the PVA, where where could where would they call? Where would they go? Tell us about your website. Well, our website, which is pva.org, very simple, um, has uh, a variety of, li of links that people can, on which people can find information about um, membership. If somebody is a veteran with a spinal cord injury or um, a, a disease or disorder like uh, ALS or multiple sclerosis, or any number of impacts, they may very well be eligible for membership in PVA. And so um, there's membership. We've got a, a menu about uh, sports. We have a wide array of sports programs that uh, people can find out more about. Our Veterans and Disability Advocacy link uh, will take you to a lot of our uh, issue briefs, webinars about uh, disability and veterans issues, uh, what we're working on in the 117th Congress and uh, the, the sort of advocacy information from that standpoint. We've got a veterans benefits program that describes the services of our uh, veterans benefits department and under that, uh, can be found information about our Veterans Career Program, which serves not just veterans with disabilities, but uh, any veteran, in fact, as well as spouses and caregivers. Um, PVA is an employment network under Ticket to Work. So we, um, we serve the folks on SSI and SSDI uh, in that capacity. And, uh, and then we, of course, we have our fundraising page, our good old development folks with a, another drop down menu that uh, gives uh, ways to support PVA, including hosting one's own fundraiser on Facebook. Um, and so there are, uh, we cover a, a wide range of activities and, and efforts. And if, um... Let's say some a business that like we have lots of our viewers are small businesses across the country, and if they ever want to hire somebody, a veteran uh, with a disability, a paralyzed veteran, how how do they get connected with with that ta those talents? I would recommend um, that they get in contact with our veterans career program. Um, we've got six or seven uh, counselors stationed around the country who cover various regions and they are constantly doing outreach to companies interested in hiring veterans with disabilities and they're very good at you know helping uh, develop develop our clients to ascertain what are their skills what are their backgrounds what are their interests and then finding matches with appropriate employers to um, hire them on. And uh, so in, in our website under Veterans Benefits, there is a link to Veterans Career Program, or you could probably just Google PVA Veterans Career Program uh, for that. It's awesome. And then, you know, the last time I went on your website, I, I just, my eye kept on getting drawn to PVA Force. PVA I'd love to, to force. Yes. Um, PVA action yeah. force to be precise. <laughs> this is tell, uh, tell us more about that. This is a um, fairly new effort we have undertaken to foster and promote engagement on behalf of PVA's priorities, um, not only by our members and veterans, but anybody who is interested in the kind of issues um, that PVA is supporting. And so you can go on to the PVA Action Force uh, webpage, and there we've got uh, a whole host of um, campaigns, I guess is what they're called. And you can 
type in your member of Congress uh, name or or district, and and there are some set narratives in that PVA action force. So if all you want to do is just send the a boilerplate narrative to the member of Congress about the issue, you can. But there's also a box for you to add your own experiences about that issue. So for example, um, we've got an, a campaign right now about improving access to air travel. And the campaign uh, says, ask your members of Congress to co-sponsor the Air Carrier Access Amendments Act, H.R. 1696 S-642. And so there's a drop down menu where people can send a letter to their member of Congress saying, hey, co-sponsor this bill. Um, and then there's also space if people have particularly unpleasant experiences with air travel as a person with a disability, they can add that in to help amplify the message. Um, we also have a campaign about the Social Security 2100 Act asking uh, for co-sponsors of, of that legislation and bringing it to the floor for a vote. And since that's coming up on August 15, I, I mentioned that too for uh, uh, immediacy purposes. Well, I love it. Just to having that just simplifies the process, it streamlines the process, and it just it makes the, 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 the ability to advocate that much easier uh, anywhere across the country. So I love love that you guys have that and PVA Action Force, uh, two thumbs up. I love it. Um, so with uh, with all the great things that you've been doing with the PVA over the years, I'd just love to know what are some of some accomplishments that you're most proud of? Well, um, sort of a, a somewhat old accomplishment. And actually that photograph over my shoulder is the signing of the Ticket to Work and Work Incentives Improvement Act, which um, has had its ups and downs over the years and required some refinements and, and uh, fixes, but it was really kind of a first step toward broadening resources to help people with disabilities return to work, um, those on, on social security disability benefits. And it was, it was a lot of fun working with the spectrum of disability allies uh, across the board. And, and it was a bipartisan effort, which was uh, an important uh, aspect to that. So I, I feel uh, kind of partial to the Ticket to Work and Work Incentives Improvement Act. It had a, a somewhat expansion of the Medicaid buy-in that uh, still needs work, but uh, helped some bit uh, enable people to work and retain access to health care. A um, couple of th things uh, of more recent vintage, PVA worked with other allies uh, in the CCD Veterans Task Force to create uh, a disabled veterans program within the Veterans Employment and Training Service at the Department of Labor with the hope that that position and program would begin raising the profile of employment challenges facing veterans with significant disabilities. Um, that's an ongoing uh, challenge because too often when you see the veterans employment statistics, they look great. But if you drill down into those statistics, BLS data shows that veterans with service-connected disabilities rated 60%, 70%, 90%, 100%. These are the veterans with really significant disabilities. Their employment uh, record is far less than your general veteran population. And so we hope that eventually, it's a new program, but we hope eventually that the Disabled Veterans Program at the Department of Labor will help to raise the profile of veterans with significant dis disabilities and their needs. Um, partly because some of the data coming out of DOL 
is rather troubling in terms of the workforce system's performance in serving veterans with disabilities. We and the National Association of Black Veterans created a Disabled Veterans Workforce Coalition recently to begin pressing the Department of Labor and the VA to focus more attention on those challenges that still remain for veterans with the most significant disabilities. So kind of kind of glad to see those initiatives getting started and, and moving forward, we hope. Uh, diving deeper into statistics really starts pull, pulling apart the, the true story. So it's, uh, it's important to, to keep doing that. And if people want to get more involved with the PBA, what, are, what, would, you, how, what would you recommend they do? Well, um, there are a number of options. Um, certainly, I'm partial to PBA Action Force because because that helps us do our job in government relations um you know so if you're if you're interested in in issue advocacy and again like i said you don't have to be a veteran or even you know associated with a veteran you just have to be interested in the same issues feel free to jump on pva action force and send a letter to your member um, the national veterans wheelchair games happen every july around the country uh, we partner with the VA and, oh my goodness, do they need gobs of volunteers for the National Veterans Wheelchair Games. Next year, it's going to be in Oregon. And so you can go to our sports department website and uh, or just go to info at pva.org and say, hey, I'm interested in volunteering for the Veterans Wheelchair Games. And they can direct your inquiry to the right uh, department, sports. Um, I, I mentioned our development page, fundraising, you know, always accepting contributions. And I saw on our development page, there's a host of fundraiser on Facebook I, for PVA that people are more than welcome to do that. Um, we have chapters. We have local chapters around the country. You can find the local chapters also on our uh, web page and reach out to them because they very often have events for which they are grateful to receive volunteers. So um, there are any number of ways to get involved. And, and if none of those sound interesting to people, again, just um, info at pva.org, uh, a note, uh, sending a note to that website or to that email saying, Hey, I'd like to get involved with PVA as a volunteer, and they'll forward it to our probably our membership department for further action. Well, Susan, th thank you so much for being our guest today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. This was a fun conversation, learning more about you, learning more about the PVA, and Thank you for all our guests and being here to the end. And uh, I wish you a beautiful rest of your day and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Happy to be here.